abortion debate is high on the global news agenda. Uh, no, that just came from the top of this building. An emotional end to the day, half a century of a woman's right to choose overturned. I don't accept this ruling, we're not going to go back. For over 20 years, Dr. Rebecca Gompertz has used the ocean to circumvent national laws. No, I don't think of myself as an outlaw. Can I think of another word? I'm a legal loophole. That's what I am. Dr. Gompertz is part of a band of mavericks and changemakers I've encountered in the ungoverned realm of the high seas, exploiting its lawlessness. Two-thirds of the planet is covered by water. It's our planet's wildest frontier, breathtaking as much as it is vital to all life. A place of discovery and endless reinvention, a metaphor for freedom, as well as a profoundly dystopian realm where the darkest of all humanities play out. Over 50 million people work at sea, and human rights and environmental abuses often occur with impunity. Six, six, of you. six people we are sleeping in there. So hot. This is, un I've never ever seen this bad. My name is Ian Urbina. As a journalist, I've spent the past decade reporting from this lawless frontier. I run an investigative journalism organization called the Outlaw Ocean Project that reports about crimes happening in this space. This is the Outlaw Ocean. Until recently, abortions were a crime in Mexico. Here, hundreds of women had been jailed after seeking medical care due to botched operations, with hospitals reporting suspicious miscarriages to the police as they would gunshot wounds. But one woman had the idea to look to the sea to circumvent the law of the land. We want to take, we can leave the, the banner with the number, but I want to take off this one because I think that uh, okay. I don't want to have problems now. I joined Dr. Gompertz aboard her vessel, the Adelaide, on this clandestine mission, two young women have traveled hundreds of kilometers quietly and anonymously to board this yacht. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go up to the front and push it off. It's clear back there, right? Yep. Viene, viene. Yeah, put it forward. All right. When I started Women on Waves, about 120,000 women per year were dying as a result of unsafe abortion. When a country makes abortion illegal, it doesn't stop any women from seeking an abortion. Women that have the money, they can always travel to another country where abortion is legal to get a legal safe abortion. Poor women that don't have these resources cannot. What it does, it's making her t take risk, health risk and her life risks in order to get it. How it works is that women on waves will rent a ship, go to a country where abortion is not allowed, where it's illegal. We sail into the harbor. There we can take women on board. We're sailing to international waters and international waters is 12 miles outside the coast. And in international waters, the local laws don't apply anymore. And it's only the laws of the sea. OK, 
Okay, so what does it say about the... The waves that are... They're coming south-southwest and they're five to seven foot. Yeah, so we're totally exposed to all the, like, so the swell right coming, now. Yeah. At this point, I'm trying to be unusually quiet and invisible because I'm truly an outsider in this context. And I'm trying not to take up much space or attention, but I'm also just fixated on the dynamic of Rebecca and how nervous and intense and driven she is to make sure that they can get these women out to sea. Sailing out of port was rough, and we even ran aground. Oh, wow, you was not good, not good at all. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Welcome, Rossi! Welcome, Rossi! Welcome, Rossi! Welcome, Rossi! Women on Waves is highly controversial and has always been challenged, often violently. They have faced countless death threats over the years. Watch out there, there. They can't go on the back. We have to go back. We don't want them to jump on. We don't want them to protect on the ship. Go on. Yet stringent laws in these countries have never stopped abortions, only pushed them underground, forcing women to seek often unsafe procedures. We are not going into sea to break any laws. Uh, it's really to support the human rights and so the, the universal human laws that we are uh, supporting. We are looking for these loopholes to make sure that women have justice. After a difficult start, we eventually reach the open sea. We had a GPS and 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 they had a, the, the the spot outside international waters uh, marked on the GPS and on the map. Um, and so we even went out a little bit further. Then when we were there, we contacted the customs again with the radio, said we're now in international waters. Rebecca quietly came on deck to spend time explaining the procedures to the two women. I met women on waves because I saw a documentary of them on Netflix called Vessel. I found out on Monday that I was pregnant and yesterday I decided I wanted to come on the boat. I think the boat shows the absurdity of the laws and the absurdity of being lucky to be in one place and not another where you can have access to the rights you deserve. So my role as the doctor is to make sure that the woman uh, has, that she has an unwanted pregnancy, that she's taking the decision to end the pregnancy in free will. I make an ultrasound to make sure that she's not pregnant too long um, and uh, that she can still use the pills, which was of course the case. Um, and I make sure that she understands how it works. She understood and she chose to swallow the tablet. And then we sailed back. And when we entered the harbor again, we said, we are here again. And that was it. Rebecca's focus and fearlessness are remarkable. And unlike the captains I'd watched elsewhere take fish from protected marine zones or the companies that condone slave labor, Rebecca was not breaking the law, but taking advantage of a loophole in the outlaw ocean. 